Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm going to be looking at the BSA Super Meteor. You've seen this rifle in a couple of videos now. I used it for the Firebird Exploding Target and the Wasp number no. 2 pellets, so I thought it was time to get it out and do a video on it. Um, in this video, I will show you and talk about the rifle and its features. I'll test the accuracy and maybe explain a bit about the history of the Meteor and how the Meteor and the Super Meteor differ. But before I talk about the rifle in general, I wanted to tell you a bit about this particular gun. Now this gun has sentimental value for me, as it belonged to my grandpa, who sadly died a couple of years ago, and it's now found its way to me. Uh, grandpa had this gun for as long as I can remember, I assume he bought it new in the 70s. I just wanted to share with you a story and a memory I have of him with this gun. Uh, I must have been about 10 years old or so, and I was staying at my grandparents' house in Norfolk, and they had quite a bit of family staying over, so my brother and I were sleeping on their bedroom floor. Uh, one morning at about six or seven o'clock, I heard a noise outside, so I opened the curtains, and there's this grey squirrel sitting on the window ledge looking in. Now, my grandma hates grey squirrels, it was panicking, and she wouldn't have the window open to shoo it away or anything. So then grandpa grabs his rifle, you know, this gun, and he races downstairs and out into the back garden with me in tow. And I can still see him aiming up at this squirrel on the window ledge, didn't hit it or anything, but just taking chunks out of the woodwork under the guttering and things. It's one of those things, it's funny to look back on it now, it's just always stuck with me. The first BSA Meteor, the Mark I, was released back in 1959, and they're currently on the Mark VII, which was released three or four years ago, and from what I've read it sounds like that's actually going to be the last version of it. So I haven't been around for around 55 years, it's quite an iconic air rifle, I believe there have been around 2 million sold in that time, and it's a rifle that's introduced many people to air gunning. And to show some of the history of it, I've got a vintage magazine article here from an early 1963 copy of Meccano magazine for the BSA Meteor. And there's probably a Mark II for that time. Now obviously the information I've given you there is of the Meteor, and this video is on the Super Meteor. Uh, but there's need for context really, as the rifles are very similar. I've removed the scope here, and you can see on the top it only actually says Meteor, doesn't mention Super anywhere. And the reason for that is that only really the stock differed. And if you take the stocks off a Meteor and a Super Meteor and compare them, you'll see that they're actually the exact same gun. There is some debate over whether the Super Meteor is actually a model in its own right. As the Blue Book of Air Guns, I've got here, actually lists it as its own separate model. The Meteor Super. And according to the Blue Book, that was made between 1967 and 1973. Um, but everything else I've read seems to suggest that the uh, Super Meteor was just an upgraded version of the normal Meteor that was available for a number of marks. I believe you could get it from the marks 3 to 5, which is supported by the serial numbers as well. Uh, this particular one is a Mark IV. You can tell that from the serial number underneath. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, the letter prefix there is TG, and that shows that it's a Mark IV in 2.2, um, so it was made between 1974 and 1978, and I'll put a list of serial numbers and the prefixes in the description below, uh, and what marks they relate to, so if you can identify yours if you don't already know. As I've said, without the stock, the Meteor and the Super Meteor are essentially the same gun, so what are the differences? The Super Meteor stock was made of a better quality wood and was shaped to include this slightly raised Monte Carlo cheek piece. And it also featured this vintage recoil pad at the back, which the standard model didn't. And that definitely adds to the gun as it makes it nice and comfortable to hold it back into your shoulder and it makes it look quite nice as well. Now, I should point out that that comparison is between the Mark IV Super Meteor and the Mark IV Meteor. Whereas if you compare it to the new Mark VII Meteor, I've got a picture of that in the new BSA catalogue, the Mark VII also includes the cheek piece and the recoil pad, but as well as that it's also got a safety and fibre optic sights, so the base model has definitely improved over time. 
cleared away all my books and catalogues so you can have a better look at the rifle itself. Now it is a brake barrel spring piston rifle and if you're unsure exactly what that means be sure to watch the air armory video on the B2 air rifle and I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's got a 18 and a half inch rifle barrel. Uh, you can see the BSA logo on the top there. Uh, some other marks of a slightly shorter barrel and the Mark 6 was also available in a carbine version with a 15 inch barrel. And the blue book actually says that the Meteor Super has a 19 inch barrel, which is another reason why I'm not sure how accurate that information is, as I've measured this barrel and it's definitely 18 and a half inches. Um, as I've mentioned already, this rifle is 2.2, but they were also available in 177. Uh, because of it being a British made gun though in the 70s, it was manufactured to a true Imperial 2.2. Uh, I explained fully what that means in my video on the Wasp number 2 pellets, so I'll put a link in the description to that as well. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but essentially, although 2.2 is generally accepted to be 5.5mm, True 2.2 is actually 5.588mm, so some standard 5.5mm pellets. Uh, not the tightest fit, but if I'm honest, this gun fires most pellets absolutely fine. But I do normally use these um, Wasp number twos, as they're actually 5.6mm, so that just a tiny bit better fit. The metal on the gun is all painted steel. Now, although it's nice to have blued steel, um, people seem to be a bit wary of guns with painted steel. I actually don't mind them too much. I think it looks quite nice. This one's still in good condition, doesn't have any chips or anything. Um, just has a few scratches on the underside of the barrel where it's been rested. And one of the benefits, I guess, of blued steel is that it doesn't actually need too much TLC to keep it looking nice. But it doesn't need to be oiled or anything to stop it rusting like blued steel. Uh, the trigger is single stage, non-adjustable. And it may well just be personal preference, but for me the trigger is the main letdown of this gun. As you can see, it's got a very short travel, that's uncocked, and when the rifle's cocked, it has no travel at all. Um, it takes quite a lot of force to pull it, and there's nothing gentle about it at all. Um, that being said, it's usable, it's not plastic, and it's not the worst trigger ever. I just don't really like it. And unlike the newer Meteors, this one doesn't have a safety. Looking now at the sights and the accuracy, the front sight it's just a small metal blade mounted on a bit of plastic. Now the hood that you can see I've got on this one here isn't actually standard. I don't think it was standard on any model, but the front sight does have grooves to accommodate a hood um, and they're readily available as aftermarket accessories. Um, I bought this one because I like hooded front sight. I'll take it off there to see it as it was. Now the front sight is removable, so there's a small screw under the blade and the blade can be punched out by a small pin in the side. And I do generally remove the front sight when I've got a scope fitted as it obscures the scope I normally have on it. Um, this isn't actually the original front sight as when the gun came to me the front sight was missing so I bought a replacement. Um, it is however the correct sight for this model. The rear sight is adjustable for windage and elevation and that can easily be adjusted by hand. It's just made of plastic and it is removable although I don't generally bother taking it off as it doesn't obscure the scope I have on it. Now I do like the open sights on this rifle especially the front sight with the hood on it and yes it's nice to have good fiber optic sights like on the new Mark 7 but I like the traditional look of these and they're accurate enough for me. I'm now going to do an accuracy test with the open sights I'll be firing 10 pellets at one of these targets from the usual distance of about 12.5 metres. And the pellets I'm going to be using, as you've already seen, are these 14.5 grain Ely Wasp number 2s. Uh, I've already mentioned earlier, I'll put a link in the description to those. So let's see how accurate it is with the open sights. Here you can see we have the target, uh, just kind of three main noticeable strays, but the rest are a tight enough group over that distance with open sights. 
uh, slightly high as the rear sight can't be adjusted to shoot any lower over this distance. Um, whilst I could have held low, it was easier to aim for the nice blue circle in the middle for consistency. So yeah, happy enough with that. I've now removed the front sight and I've put the scope back on. And that's just a little Gamo 4x20. Now it's not the best scope or mounts, but it's good for the distance and I like to have it set up that way as that's the way Grandpa had it. I'm now going to do another 10 shots at a fresh target and see how much I can improve the Super Meteor's accuracy by mounting a scope. Here we have the scope target. There's a tighter grouping than with the open sights, which is obviously to be expected. And these couple of shots here, I felt myself pull the rifle as I fired those. So if you discount those, uh, you can see it's a pretty accurate rifle. And you can see there the scoped and unscoped targets for comparison. Now some of you keen eye viewers may have noticed that this is much more accurate than um, the target in my video on the Wasp number 2s, even though I was using the same gun and the same pellets. And you can see that target here. And the reason for that is um, I've since zeroed the scope and today I had the gun bench rested, uh, but I didn't in the other video. Overall, I really like this rifle. It's a good all-rounder. I definitely recommend it. It'd be great for pest control or hunting in 2.2 or plinking or target shooting in 177. Uh, it looks good, it feels nice, it's got good power, and as you've seen it's relatively accurate both scoped and unscoped. So at the end of the day I can even forgive the trigger, and despite it being true 2-2, it still fires most pellets no problem. Now another benefit of the um, Meteor and the Super Meteor is that they're relatively inexpensive rifles. You could expect to pay about 100 to £125 second hand for a Super Meteor, and if you're lucky that might even include a scope. And for the standard Mark IV Meteor, probably looking at around £80 used. I have a copy of the Airgun World Buyer's Guide 2014 here. And that gives the retail price for the new Mark VII Meteor at £165. That's new without a scope. And as I've already said, that has the same features as the Super Meteor uh, with the addition of a safety and fibre optic sights. So, thanks for tuning into the Air Armoury. Be sure to check out the other videos. And until next time, Keep your arms in the air.